Good morning, everyone. This is Mrs. Campbell speaking. Actually, it's morning for me. It might be afternoon for you. So, hi, everybody. This is Mrs. Campbell, and I'm sorry I can't be with you today. Today, you're going to be doing the additional lesson on quadratic formula, which is certainly something that you're familiar with, so this is really just a review lesson. Within each of our quadratic formula problems today, we are, however, going to be writing our answers in simplest radical form. So we're going to need to have a discussion about kind of how we do that um, today. So today is the 10th of October. So let's write down our date, just 10, 10. And we begin with a review of simplifying radicals and fractions. And when we have radicals, the rule on simplifying goes something like this. To simplify means to simplify really kind of has two parts to it. One of those parts is no perfect squares. Perfect square, let me just say factors under the square root. Now perfect squares are numbers like one and four, nine, 16, 25, 36, and I'm just going to say dot, dot, dot. These are the numbers 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and so on. Those are perfect squares. When we simplify radical, we never leave that under there. Um, so that's part 1. And part 2, if we have any fractions, we have to, uh, I'll say here, just reduce those fractions. So let me show you how we might do that with just some simple problems to begin. So the first question says to to simplify the square root of 150. To do that, I want to see if I have any perfect squares that might divide into 150, and I want to find the biggest one that I can. Now, I've only listed that up to 36, but we could list others as well. We could say 49, we could say 64, and so on. Um, if I did, I could start looking at some of those bigger numbers, and 64 certainly does not divide into 150 evenly, neither does 36, but 25 does. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this down into... 25 times, let's see, 25 goes into 156 times. So we're going to break it into 25 times 6. Now, because it's a square root, both of these have square roots on them. So to simplify it, this perfect square 25 comes outside the radical and gets reduced. The square root of 25, of course, is 5, so that becomes a 5. And the square root of 6 can't be reduced any further, so I'll leave that as a square root of 6. And that is, of course, what we consider the simplified version. Now, I'm just going to test this value. So I've got my calculator in my hand, and I'd like you to take yours out now, too. So I'm going to wait just a second for you to do that. All right, so you're digging into your bag right now. I'm sure you're finding it, pulling it on out. So here's what I want you to do. Once you have it, I want you to, on your calculator, type the square root of 150. And if you do, you should get about 12.25. Additionally, I'm going to type 5 times the square root of 6, and when I do that, I also get 12.25. So really, these are just both equivalent things, meaning they have the same value. They're just different ways of writing it, and 5 square root of 6 is kind of the agreed-upon way to simplify a radical. Now, the next one is a negative, and you might remember from previous years last year that a negative under a radical can't happen, that that's going to result in an imaginary number. So I'm going to, when I break this down, I'm going to consider that that's a negative number. So in breaking down the second example here, I look at 48 and I'm thinking about perfect squares that divide into 48. And I want the biggest one. Now you might look at it and go, well, four for sure goes into 48. And you'd be right, it does. But there's actually a bigger one, and that is 16. And by finding the bigger one makes everything a little bit easier um, in terms of simplifying. So this is going to break apart into really three parts. It's going to be the 16. That's the biggest perfect square that divides into 48. It's also going to be the negative 1 because it is, in fact, negative. And then what's left over is going to be the 3. 16 times negative 1 times 3 results in 48. And each of these has a radical on them because the 48 has a radical on them. So now I'm going to reduce each of those parts as much as I can. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of negative 1, by definition, is this thing we call i, which indicates that it is an imaginary number. And then square root of 3 can't be reduced, so I get 4i squared of 3. That's considered reduced.
All right, one more time, guys, for these, and then we're going to hit that quadratic formula thing. So in our next example, 10 plus the square root of 500 equals 25. Now, I don't show all this work every single time, but if I struggle a little bit, then maybe I would. But I'm going to look at 500, and right away I'm thinking 500 is divisible by 100. That's a perfect square. This is the square root of 100 times the square root of 5. And that's usually what I do in my work. And then I'm going to rewrite this as 10 plus the square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 5 cannot be reduced, so I'll just write square root of 5. And all that is over 25. And now comes the simplifying part. So when I think about the fraction and how to simplify it, this 25 applies to both parts of the top. So in order to do any simplifying, we have to have something that's common to really all three things, the 10, the 10 squared of 5, and the 25. And of course we do. Each of those is divisible by 5. So if I divide this by 5, that leaves me with a 2. This would leave me with a 2. You'll notice I don't do anything with the radical. That only because it's on the outside can I do that. And this would leave me with a 5. So in I, when I reduce this, it becomes 2 plus 2 squared of 5 over 5. And that is that one. All right, now we're going to go ahead and move on to doing some solving. So um, I'm not sure what my time frame looks like on this, and I'm going to try to get this done by 730. I don't know what time it is right now, but um, so I'm going to go a little bit quickly through this. The first question here asks us to solve by factoring. We've been doing that for the last couple of, um, of additional lessons. To do that, of course, I'm not going to use a generic rectangle. I'm just going to do some parentheses real quick. 5x squared, no choices on that, guys. It's going to be a 5x and an x. With the 6, it could be a 6 and a 1. It could be a 2 and a 3, and I don't actually know, but I'm going to try to think smart on this and see if I can't get it real quick. So I'm thinking if I use the 3 and the 2 and put the 2 here, that's going to give me a 10, and the 3 here, that's going to give me a 3, and I can definitely get a 7 out of that. So to get that to be a negative 7, I'm going to make the 10 negative and the 3 positive, and that will give me final answers of negative 3 fifths and 2. So then we might try this next one. And so in our second example here, if we did the same thing, I might go, well, 2x and x are the only choices on that. Then I've got a 3, which is going to be a 3 and a 1, no choices. Position, of course, matters, though. So if I put it this way, I get a 3x and a 2x, and I can't get a negative 2x out of that. So maybe the 1 should go here and the 3 should go here. That's a 6 and a 1, and that's going to be either a 7 or a 5, and that's not going to work. This one is not factorable. If it's not factorable, that doesn't mean it's not solvable. It doesn't mean it doesn't have real answers. It could. They're just not going to be nice ones. They're going to either involve square roots, like this problem up here, or maybe imaginary numbers, like this one right here. Not everything can be done by factoring. So then when we do that, we're going to have to use this thing called the quadratic formula. So I'm going to jump down here now to the quadratic formula. I know you all remember the quadratic formula. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and write it down with you. Remember that a is the coefficient on the x squared and b is on the x and c is the constant and it has to equal zero. And so then I'm going to write a little formula and here's where the formula goes. It goes x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All we have to do is plug numbers into that. And the beauty of something like that is that it works for every single problem. That's kind of a nice thing. So it would work if it was factorable or if it wasn't factorable. So we're going to go back to the examples now. The example I have right below here is the same problem that we did by factoring. And I want to show you how the quadratic formula works for that. So a, of course, is the 5, b is negative 7, c is negative 6. I'm not even going to write that down. I'm just going right to the song. So here goes. x equals opposite b. b is negative 7, so opposite that is positive 7. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. I often, guys, will square that before I write it down if I can. Um, and I do that because, like in this case, it's negative. If you want to write it down, you have to put parentheses around the negative 7. Most people forget to do that. So I'm just going to square it, right? So that negative 7 squared, we all know that's a positive 49. So that's my b squared minus 4ac 
all over to A. And then I'm going to pick up my calculator and I'm going to do the underneath part of the radical. So please do that with me and I'm going to write over here. X is, on my calculator I'm typing 49 minus 4 parentheses 5 parentheses negative 6. And when I do, I get the number 169. Now, I'm kind of hoping, although I'm not certainly 100%, that you might recognize that that number underneath there is a perfect square. And when that happens, that means it's going to be a nice answer and it was factorable to begin with, which we actually know because that was our first question today. A square root of 169 is 13. So I'm going to rewrite this as 7 plus or minus 13 over 10. Now there's really two answers there, one that gets a plus and one that gets the minus. So I'm going to do each of those. 7 plus 13 is 20. That's going to get divided by 10. 7 minus 13 is negative 6. That's going to get divided by 10. And then both of those are fractions that can be reduced. 10 divided by, excuse me, 20 divided by 10 is 2. And negative 6 divided by 10 is the same as negative 3 divided by 5. And if you compare these answers to the answers we had earlier, they are in fact exactly the same. The nice thing about the quadratic formula is that it can always be used. And that's a really great thing. Um, a great thing. Although there's a lot of work involved and sometimes factoring is just a whole lot easier, which is why we have two methods. All right, let's continue on to the right side of your sheet. We have four problems here on the right-hand side, and it asks us to solve using an appropriate algebraic method. Give the answer in simplest radical form. So I'm going to look at question A. Now, i got to tell you, as I look at question A, my gut is like, I think it's going to factor with a 5 and a 6 in it. Probably will factor. We're going to always try that first. And my kind of rule of thumb is like, 20 seconds, maybe 30. If you can't do it in 20 or 30 seconds, then you're going to go to quadratic formula. So here goes my 20 seconds. I'm going to go x and x, no choices. 5 and 1, no choices. Here's where the problem lies. That 5 is negative, which means 1 positive, 1 negative. No matter which one I make positive and which one make, I make negative, I cannot get them to combine to be a 6. It was not factorable. 20 seconds is over. I'm ready now for quadratic formula. So here goes. Didn't work. Then I'll go to the quadratic formula. So it goes like this. x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared. Notice how I squared that right away. Minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, I want everyone to show the setup as I just did. I would also like everyone to show me this next step. The next step is going to be figuring out what needs what goes underneath this radical. So either on your calculator or in your head, whichever. Uh, but don't type in the square root because as soon as you hit the square root button, you're going to get a decimal approximation. And I don't want that because I want to write this in simplest radical form. So just leave the square root and type in 36 minus 4 times 1 times negative 5. Did you already do that? Oh, I knew you did. You're so fast. 56 is what you get. And then that's going to be over 2. Now I'm going to go through my list of perfect squares and see if I can find anything that divides into a 56. Now certainly 1 does, but that's not going to help me at all. Um, 4, does that? I'm going to my calculator right now and I'm doing 56 divided by 4. Oh, look at that. It does perfectly. It goes in 14 times. So I'm going to break this 56 apart into the square root of 4 and the square root of 14. That's how we break down a radical into perfect squares. This then would become negative 6 plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 14 cannot be reduced. And all of that is over 2. One more step, guys. These are all even numbers. That means they're all divisible by 2. So I'm going to take one more step and go negative 6 divided by 2. 2 squared of 14 divided by 2 is just a plain old square root of 14. And in the bottom, just a plain old 1. And that is my answer now in simplest radical form. Those are real numbers, by the way. So in terms of like x-intercepts, it's got two real x-intercepts. They're not imaginary at all. Um, so that's what that one looks like. All right, let's go on to question. Um, actually, I'm going to skip B. B, by the way, ends up being one that is... Uh, factorable just like the other one that we saw you would give that year a couple of minutes and it actually works out really nicely c however is not let's take a look at that one so in question c 
um, kind of a mess right now. See where the X squared is? It's on the right-hand side. I'm going to put everything over there with it so that it's positive. So I'll write 0 equals 3X squared. I'm going to be subtracting the 7X from both sides. I'll be adding, oops, sorry, which is going to be, scratch that. I'm going to erase this. Now, I can't remember what the eraser is. I feel like it's that one. Nope, I don't think it is. I don't know what it is. I'll scribble. That works. Oh, no, wait, that was an eraser. Look at that. It's such fun, these little tools. Okay, I'm trying again. Um, so, what am I doing? 3, 0 equals 3x squared. Back to that. Subtracting the 7x, combining with the 5x would leave us with a minus 2x. That's better. And then a plus 4. 0 equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 4. And you can try to factor this, and I would give it a couple, you know, like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and it turns out it doesn't work out. And there isn't even all that many things to try, so it's kind of worth it. Um, I am going to have to do quadratic formula. So here goes. x equals opposite b. That's a 2. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. When you square negative 2, you get 4. Minus 4ac all over 2a. So, again, just going to what's underneath the radical, I'm going to type on my calculator 4 minus 4 times 3 times 4. And I get a negative 44. I hope you have the same. And that's all over 6. And she got kind of a yucky number in here, so it wasn't going to be factorable. But you don't always know that. And then uh, the next thing I guess I would do is look for some things that might divide into negative 44, some perfect squares, like 4 or or a 9 or 25 or 16 or whatever. In this case, it happens to be a 4. So that 44 can be broken into a 4. It is negative, so I'll have a negative 1. And then there's a square of 11 in there as well. 4 times negative 1 times 11 is the square root of 44. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of negative 1, by definition, is i, which indicates it's imaginary. Square root of 11 cannot be reduced, so I'll just rewrite it as square root of 11. Now this one happens to be imaginary. If you were looking at the graph of this quadratic function, it would never cross the x-axis. That's sort of what that tells me. I'll take one more step, guys, and reduce it here. All of these are even. So divide them all by 2. Divide 2 by 2, you get 1. Divide this 2 by 2, you get another 1. So you're just going to have i squared of 11. Divide that bottom by 2, and you get 3. All right, just one more question on this page here. And we are going to do this one. This next one's sort of an interesting one. So I'm going to switch colors on that one. Um, so for this next one, I'm looking at it. And of course, my first thought is, you know, can I factor it? I don't know. I don't like the format it's in right now. I sure like it to say zero. And I really am not a big fan of the negative 5x squared. So I'm going to put everything on the left-hand side. So when I do, add 5x squared to both sides. The 7x is already there on the left side. I'll just leave that. And then this 9, I'm going to move to the other side by subtraction. And that makes the other 9 go away. And so this is all we have. Now, is it possible that that thing factors? Well, the answer is absolutely. And it factors in a really easy way because these two terms, this one and this one, there's a greatest common factor here of x. I'm going to take that x and factor it out. So x times what is 5x squared? Well, that's a 5x. And x times what is 7x? Well, that'd be a 7. Okay, and if you don't know what I just did, think about the distributive property. x times 5x is 5x squared. x times 7x, excuse me, times 7 is 7x. That is now in factored form. And so these two things are being multiplied to equal 0, which means that either the x has to be 0 or the x has to be negative 7 over 5. Now, would the quadratic formula work in something like that? You bet it would. It, however, would be a much longer process than what we just did here by looking for that greatest common factor. All right, now I'm going to flip to the back side, and I'd like you to flip to the back side with me. We are, in the interest of time here, going to be skipping um, example E. I'd like to go to the word problem, which is our final example for today, and that'll give you hopefully some time to do some work today. Uh, so let's read this one together. It says, the number of bacteria in a refrigerated food 
is given by n of t equals 18t squared minus 20.3t plus 120, where t is the temperature of the food in Celsius. Predict the temperature when 390 bacteria are present. So 390 bacteria is an n value. So we want n to be 390, and the question is to predict the temperature, and that's what t is. So t is question mark. So here's what my equation is going to look like. If I go back to this equation up here, this is the equation that makes my prediction, and it's going to go like this. n, the number of bacteria, is 390. That's going to equal 18t squared minus 20.3t plus 120. Now that is clearly a quadratic equation because you've got an x squared and an x in it. And it is highly unlikely that that thing is going to factor where the 20.3 has the middle term. So, and besides that, such big numbers, I wouldn't even want to try to factor it. So this is likely going to be a quadratic formula question. But no matter what way I choose to go on this one, that 390 has to be a 0. And it's not. So I'm going to have to subtract the 390 from both sides. In doing that, I'll get 0 on the left. 18t squared on the right minus 20.3t and then this would be a minus gosh I hope I can do that in my head 270 is what I think 120 minus 390 and then again I don't think it's going to factor and even if it did I wouldn't want to try so I'm going to go ahead and break into song time to start singing t that's what we're solving for this time so t equals opposite b that's going to be 20.3 plus or minus the square root. I actually can't do 20.3 in my head, so I am going to use parentheses here and write negative 20.3 and square it. Now, if you don't put the parentheses there, it will square the 20.3, but it'll make it negative and it will give you a wrong answer. So it's super important to write that in parentheses. So that was my b squared minus 4ac. Can you tell I used to be in show choir? Probably not, huh? all over to A. You know if you could see me right now because while I was singing that and writing it, I was also doing a jazz square. Just kidding. Now I'm going to type. All right, inside. In parentheses, I am typing, and I hope you're typing with me, guys. This is a participation activity. Parentheses, negative 20.3. Close parentheses and square it. Minus 4, parentheses 18, parentheses negative 270, and I get 1, oh, 19,852.09. I hope that's what you got too. Let's assume I type that correctly. That would be nice. Actually, yep, I can't assume that. All right, so 20.3 plus or minus the square root of 1, 9, 852.09 all over 2 times 18, which is 36. Now, before I go any further, probably should mention that this is a word problem, and we're going to be responding with a temperature in Celsius. And rarely in my life have I ever asked anyone what the temperature was and had them tell me it in terms of a square root. It doesn't really make sense to do that. So because this is a word problem, it's a WP word problem, we're going to give our answer this time as a decimal, and we're always going to round to hundredths. I think that would make most sense in the context of the problem. So word problems, we're going to write in decimal form. So I'm picking up a calculator right now, and I'm typing, and there's two answers there, remember, one with a plus and one with a minus. So I'm going to do 20.3 plus the square root. Um, if I were doing this on a TI-82, I'd use the answer button. I'm on an 84, so I said TI-82. TI-83 is what I meant. Uh, and the TI-84, I'm just going to reach up and grab that number, whatever you have to do on your calculator. Then please press Enter, because you actually have to add those together before you can divide by 36. The 36 does apply to both of them. And do type this. Make sure you know how. There's certainly a skill involved in knowing how to use your calculator. Now, about 4.48 is what I'm getting. That is degrees Celsius. Now, I'm going to do the other one. So, 20.3 minus the square root. And if you're working with a TI-83, you probably have to just type that number in again. If you're working with a TI-84, you can just reach up and grab it. 
press enter. You have to actually do the subtraction before you divide by 36 and get negative 3.35. And that is also in degrees Celsius. Now, lots of times with quadratics, you reject one answer. These are both temperatures, and temperatures can be negative. So I think both of them are going to be just fine. We'll circle both and call both of them our answers. And that takes us to the end of this podcast, so good luck with your lesson. I likely will not be there again tomorrow. And re just to remind you that tomorrow is your review day. It is also a day for retake, so please be ready for both of them. And I will see you either Monday or Tuesday next week.